Hey, hey, this is HSM Living. I am Lindsay McKeon, and this is Tori DeVito. Hi. <laughs> uh, thank you for showing up on such short notice, yeah. right before you moved to Chicago to be a huge star in Chicago Med. Stop that. <laughs> Thanks for having me here. I'm so appreciative. Yeah. So grateful you could be here. Um, so for everybody out there who's going to be watching you on this new NBC spinoff, can you tell a little bit about your character or what it means to you or how, how exciting it is to be a part of this and to be moving your whole life to Chicago? Yeah, uh, I mean, I've gotten rid of my apartment, I've shipped my car, like I am i can't wait to go winter shopping because my closet living in LA lacks a lot of that. So you're gonna I'm need gonna a lot of freeze my little shopping. butt off. Um, I'm super excited, you know, it's, it's, there's gonna be a lot of crossovers between the three shows now, and um, my character's really exciting. She's a pediatrician, she works in the ER. I start off the show in my third trimester, pregnant, mm -hmm. and I just, feel like there's so many places to go with that, so I'm really excited to see what they do. Um, we have our first table read coming up next week, and so I'm gonna get to read my first script and see where it's all gonna go, and I'm excited to meet the cast. It's just, it's all happened so fast, and I'm just excited to get out there, and I start medical training on Tuesday. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. That's gonna be so You're gonna fun. be a mini doctor. I know. You can <laughs> save lives. Yeah. Um, well, how, appropriate that you'll be working with children since you do a lot of work with children in Africa and with hospice and stuff like that. I know yeah. it's incredibly important to you. Can you speak a little bit about why? Yeah, um, you know, I, I was lucky enough, um, a man that I work with through hospice uh, was the one that introduced me to going to Africa. Um, he was doing a documentary over there about child caregivers. and. Um, when I went over there, you know, I was always aware that that was going on, but seeing it firsthand was just eye-opening and shocking and extremely daunting because we live in such a separate world, mm -hmm. you know? So um, it's so important to me. I just did the narration for the film Road to Hope, Yay. which which is about the child caregiver, so I'm really excited for people to see it. and. Um, it's amazing the strength these young kids have, you know, and the common denominator with all the patients that I've noticed is everyone just wants to share their story. They want to talk about their life experiences. And when you're in that situation with someone who knows that their time is limited, that they're in the process of passing, and all they want to do is share their memories, it really puts the focus on showing you that life is about the moments. It's like I came back here and I actually had a hard time transitioning because I would be in trivial conversations with my friends which is no fault of anyone no. it's just what we're used to Correct. and I would just be spacing out like mm -hmm. I can't talk about this right now I don't know where I my There's head no is connection. somewhere else Doesn't it would feel important yeah after just seeing what you've seen so um I definitely tried to carry that into my life too like the little stuff doesn't matter it could be so much worse right you know just appreciating every day and and every person that I love and do you have any like uh, other practice meditation mindfulness that you do? Yeah, um, I started meditating about oh, I think four years ago. Twenty minutes twice a day, and the hardest one is the afternoon to take that mm -hmm. time to say, you know what, I'm going to take twenty minutes away. I'm going to go meditate, and then you realize that well, I just spent forty minutes flipping through my Instagram and my right. Facebook. I could have been meditating, mm -hmm. and I'd feel so much better than what I just did. So, like you just took um, the best nap of your life, and you're ready to yeah, go. Yeah, you're of espresso. alert, <laughs> and yeah, and it also calms me. I tend to get very anxious, mm -hmm. and I overthink things, and um, you know, just live in like a very so meditation for me just kind of brings me down, and it's so important. Mm -hmm. What makes you feel sexy? <laughs> <laughs> On a completely different note here, 180 that. Um, honestly, waking up in bed with my boyfriend, feeling disheveled and feeling that he thinks I'm the sexiest thing ever. And it's like that moment where you're just both in these like very raw, open positions and there's no nothing going on and you feel you look your worst and then it's just like feeling like oh no this is when I'm you know the most free is not when you have all your hair and makeup mm. done and you're going to these things and you're in these outfits it's like just stripped raw of anything Correct. you know everything and also I feel my sexiest when 
Um, you know, working on loving your body for where you are uh, is really important. And as I've gotten older, you know, when your metabolism slowing down and this and that, it's so easy to get so critical of everything. Um, and especially in this business we're in, everything is so highlighted. Mm -hmm. And and we learning. see ourselves every day in the mirror, so yeah. we're going to be the most critical of ourselves. So, you know, those moments, too, where I'm just walking around my house alone in my underwear or whatever and walking past a mirror and appreciating, you know, the cellulite or the curves I have as a woman. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I look good. Good it's for like, you. That, those are the moments where it's like, yeah, I'm sexy. It's like you feel the, the best then. You know what I mean? It's I love like, that. Yeah. She yeah. feels sexy when she's raw. <laughs> <laughs> you hula hoop? I do. <laughs> I just found that out this morning. Did you really? Yes, I didn't know oh, that. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yes. That's so funny. Okay, so let's teach the audience. I think m most people have a problem when they hula hoop, they think they have to go like this. Right. It's more like you want to push the points here, here, and in the middle of your back. So you just do like subtle, just subtle movement. You know, you feel it, and then you feel it, you're like, I'm doing a workout video, I love it. <laughs> and then you reverse it. I gotta reverse, reverse it again. I'm better at the right. You look great, and then when you walk it around, you oh, kind of like move out your foot, so you push it with that hip, Walking. you know? And now I'm stuck. stuck, and now I'm stuck. And now you're stuck, and now, and now, now you're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite hooper on Instagram lives in Chicago, and there's a whole no. huge hoop community there. So I've already reached out to this her. This is what she's I'm gonna so be doing. <laughs> she's gonna be at the hospital, at work, and in the hula hoop community in Chicago. Yay! So is there anything else that you would like to share or plug or? Um, well, I did a really exciting film this um, summer that once we know where it will be shown, I'll be super excited for people to go see it. Um, it's called Amy Makes Three. And it also stars um, this wonderful man, Mike Doyle, who plays my husband, and um, this amazingly talented young girl named Ursula Parker as well. Mm -hmm. And it's about, you know, a husband and wife, and, you know, they end up losing their uh, newborn uh, baby. And it's about the grieving process, and it also is a psychological thriller, and it was just... It was the most physically and emotionally draining thing I've ever done, but in the best way possible. Did you have to cry every day? or was Every day. Yeah. Uh, I was either in terror, grieving, <clears throat> sat every, every single day. Like, my hands were going numb. I was mm -hmm. like, I felt like I was going to pass out, but in the best way. Like, it was so... <laughs> Actors are a little... I know. Funny I love head. it. Torment me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, but I just feel like I took so much... It was... I, I, take, I took more from that film than I've ever from anything wow. else, and I'm so excited to share it. Good. You know, being able to fall in love with my character and do the best that I can do every time um, and portray what I want to portray is just so important to me. Um, and also, you know, staying in love with it. Mm. It's so easy to become complacent or with you know everything. learn tricks that you know easy tricks and tips to to make it go faster and you have to like kind of stop yourself and re-fall in love and learn something new so that's always really important I like um, that keep, that's yeah. that's like the tagline for everybody in their jobs yeah. and their husbands and their boyfriends <laughs> re-fall <Yeah>. in love <laughs> re it's so true so true brilliant yeah Thank you. Thank you. Free fall in love with Tori. <laughs> and Lindsay. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching.